and welcome to WDML Teen News. As you can see, it is very sunny out today. But do you remember that tornado that happened six months ago? I know I do, so today we're going to answer some questions that nobody has before. The 2014 Topeka, Kansas tornado has made a big impact on some people's lives, and not because they lost their makeup. Some of our viewers had some questions for us, and we had some questions for them. One of our questions we asked was, how does a tornado affect your area, even if it wasn't in your area? Piper from California said, I ride down to the market on my bike to get the best meat products from Topeka, Kansas. A few days after the tornado, I went down to get some meat for dinner. I went over to the stand and saw they had no meat from Kansas. So I took some meat from the other shelf and rode home. I told my parents they had no meat from Kansas, and they told me a huge tornado had gone through and it might be a while before they got any tender meat again. We also asked, how are you inspired to act after this tornado? The majority of the people who were inspired by this disaster volunteered to help rebuild homes and other buildings. A school group in Kansas City decided to do a walkathon to raise money for this disaster. That was all for the tweeted questions, but don't worry, we have more news about it. The 2014 Topeka, Kansas tornado was an EF3. An EF3 tornado can cause devastating damage, including roofs being ripped off of houses and wall structured houses being torn apart. The most scary part about EF3 is, is that trains can be flipped over. And as you see in this tornado, a train did flip over going to New York City. Six people did lose their lives and three people are still hospitalized. Here's a video. This is a Fujita scale which they use to measure tornadoes. An F0 tornado has wind speeds about 73 miles per hour. Chimneys and signs are damaged and tree branches can be flying all over the place. An F1 tornado can have wind speeds from 73 to 112 miles per hour. Roofs can also be torn off houses, cars can be flown, and mobile homes can be ripped off their foundations. An F2 tornado has wind speeds about 113 miles per hour to 157. Roofs can be torn off the frames of houses, mobile homes destroyed, and cars lifted off the ground. An F3 tornado has wind speeds from 158 to 206 miles per hour. Some roofs and walls can be ripped out of homes and may be placed miles away. Trains can be flipped over and heavy cars can be picked up and trees can also be uprooted. An F4 tornado has wind speeds about 207 miles per hour to 260. Well-constructed houses ripped off of foundations and weak foundations are flown away and cars can be thrown too. An F5 tornado has wind speeds from 261 to 318 miles per hour. Well-constructed houses can be whipped off foundations and flown away from level foundation. Also, cars can be blown or picked up and dropped 100 meters away. And winds can be so strong that the bark off a tree can be ripped off. Now, Luna, I understand that there is some government involved in this tornado. Yes, Danielle. Actually, the government did do a lot of work. The government sent guards to help people get out of their house and find possessions in the debris. They also helped rebuild homes and buildings and even set up a shelter for people who had lost their home. Looks like they helped out a lot. One of the biggest questions is, why did this tornado happen where it happened? Well, we all know that Topeka, Kansas is a city, and that is one of the reasons why it is not common for it to happen there. Though many people debate if tornadoes can happen in a city, they can. However, it is just very unlikely. Tornadoes have hit big cities such as Atlanta, Georgia, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and even Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Kansas is located in a part of the United States known as Tornado Alley. But what is Tornado Alley? Tornado Alley is a place in the United States where tornadoes happen a lot. Earlier this week, Danielle went over to the University of Kansas to interview Professor Hicks, who studies and teaches tornadoes. Hello, Professor. I understand that you know a lot about tornadoes. Yes, reporter Danielle. I do know a lot about tornadoes and medicine and rocks and minerals. That's okay. I have a few questions for you today. Bring it on. What is a tornado? A tornado is a small spinning column of air that has high wind speeds and a low central pressure that touches the ground. A 
tornado occurs when warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico and cold, dry air from Canada meet. Tornado starts out as a funnel cloud that pokes through the bottom of a cumulonimbus cloud that hangs in the air. The funnel cloud becomes a tornado once it hits the ground. Okay. About 75% of Earth's tornadoes occur in the United States. Tornadoes average from 74.5 miles per hour to 112 miles per hour, except for when a tornado in 1998 had wind speeds up to 258 miles per hour. Okay, so I have another question for you that is not going to take as long. How long does a tornado usually last? The average time for a tornado is about 10 minutes. However, tornadoes can last for hours or only a few seconds. If the winds that form a tornado keep going, then the tornado will last longer. A tornado will last shorter if the wind speeds aren't powerful enough or the precipitation isn't as high. That's all we have from Professor Hicks for today. Now back to you, Mackenzie. Thank you, Danielle. Now, earlier this week, I met up with two sisters, Michelle and Dorothy, who suffered from the EF3 tornado. I could tell you about their story, but let's hear it from them. I am standing in front of the Topeka, Kansas Capitol building. Today, I am with two sisters, Michelle and Dorothy, who suffered from the EF3 tornado that went through their town six months ago. Were you warned when um, the tornado went through your town? Yes, a siren went off throughout the town, which told us to stay in the basement. What did you do when the tornado was over? We went upstairs about half an hour after the tornado, tornado to look at the wreckage. We started calling for our parents because we, didn't, we couldn't find them. Then the National Guard came and took us to this temporary home with the other people whose homes were destroyed. When did you find your parents? A couple of days later, when the National Guard came, they found our parents a couple of yards away from the house dead. Did you immediately know that you were going to live with your grandparents? We knew that our grandparents were the only family left. We weren't really thinking about that until, our, until their grandparents arrived at the scene and arranged with police that they would take us to their home. Wow, what a dramatic story. Were you girls inspired any, at all by this disaster? Yes, we were inspired by the disaster. We decided that it would be nice to build an orphanage with our grandparents for the kids who lost their parents. Wow, that is very nice of you two. Hope it all goes well. And thank you for meeting with me. Just today. go with us! <laughs> We'll be back to tell you how we were inspired right after the break. Do you want to kill a workout in your home but don't want to go to those expensive stores? Well, come on down to Mac Daddy's Workout Palooza. Okay, here's one of our customers now. You can even buy one of our products to take home.
how pumped I am now. Oh yeah. Look how pumped we are now. Oh yeah. That Daddy's Fitness Center is not responsible for stolen items. Do not use these items if you have cancer, heart problems, or diabetes. Thank you. Swats! Welcome back, and don't forget to go to Mac Daddy's Workout Palooza. Now back to the inspiration piece. <clears throat> wow, those girls have a great story. And they're even in the process of making an orphanage, too. Well, they're not the only ones who got inspired. We made a little safety pack of our own. Here you go, it's a TTP. This is how you make an emergency pack. Step one. Take a flashlight and make sure it has extra batteries in it. Step two, put a few Nalgene water bottles in it. And make sure you have extra water to fill them up with. Step three, it is also good to have some just dried water meals just in case you are trapped in your house for a while. Step four, if you have just added water meals, then you need something to cook it with. So why don't we have a mini cooker to make sure we can cook stuff with? And last but not least, you might need a blanket in case you lose heat down there. Now you can have a TTP too, but make sure you don't add things you don't need. Like makeup or a hair curler. But feel free to add things like toothbrush and a toothpaste. That's all we have for today. But make sure you watch next week. Same time. Same place. On WDML. WDML.